In a traditional bubble sort, we only carry the larger elements from left to right. But in this variation of bubble sort that we will refer as bidirectional bubble sort, we will also carry the smallest element from right to left. In a traditional bubble sort, we will have one outer loop normally that will keep track of the unsorted part of the data set, which we will express here using a for loop. So for a array data of size n that represents our data set, an out being our variable to mark the boundary between unsorted elements and the sorted larger elements of the data set, the for loop is written as the inner loop traditionally is used to carry the larger elements from the left to the right. In a bidirectional bubble sort, we use an additional loop to carry the smaller elements from right to the left. So we will use a variable called small that marks the boundary between the unsorted elements and the sorted smaller elements of the data set. And we will use a variable called in to track our index. While we attempt to carry the larger elements from left to the right, and also while we attempt to carry the smaller elements from right to the left. So let us declare our elements without any further ado. Now let us define our first for loop that will move our larger elements from left to the right. If element at index in is greater than element at index in plus one, let's swap them. Now you may be wondering what swap is. Swap is a simple method that swaps elements at positions that are passed to it as parameters. And we're not gonna discuss it to keep this short. Let us define our second for loop that will move our smaller elements from right to the left. In this smaller, in, not the smaller, in the for loop here, if element at index in is smaller than element at index in minus one, then we swap them. And we use the same swap function we discussed earlier uh, that we're not gonna discuss here. Now, obviously, after this second for loop, the smallest element will be at position small, and there is no need to look for either the smallest element or the largest element at that position. So we exclude that from future searches for smaller or larger elements by incrementing it by one. So we're gonna do small plus plus. Now we close our outer for loop. This concludes our tutorial on how to write a bidirectional bubble sort, which cuts the sort time by half, as shown in my blog, where I had some run times. So have a look at that. And thank you for listening. I hope you liked the video and subscribe to my channel for more of this kind. Thank you.